Hello, I'm here to preach a message the Lord laid on my heart Friday. <clears throat> this is kind of one of these unusual messages I call. Because sometimes, you know, you get a doctrinal message, and of course, you know, that would be probably more what I call a regular message. And sometimes I have more what's called an inspirational message, a message to encourage or to challenge us as believers, this might be more of a challenge. And of course, there's messages sometimes to warn, to rebuke, and to reprove. Well, whatever category this is, the Lord spoke to me about this Friday. And the Lord gave it to me, and I decided I had better preach it while it's on my mind. I got done just a, about an hour or so ago while, you know, eating today. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read the text. <clears throat> Got your Bibles? Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 9. I mean, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. There's no nine chapters in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Like I said, this is an unusual message. But the title is, What Happened to Ryan? What Happened to Ryan? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, ask your Father to please anoint my lips of clay, touch my heart and life, and touch the hearts and the lives of those who are going to listen to this message. And Father, if Ryan is still living, Please deal with him especially. Please let this message sometime how reach him. Touch him, God. And Father, I ask you to bless and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. I do not understand how this happened. A few weeks ago, I just started thinking about this guy I knew from Davis and Elkins College, Ryan. And for the sake that you won't think I'm talking about Ryan Marquis or Ryan Ralston, who I'm sure neither of them, I know neither of them ever went to Davis and Elkins College as a student. For that sake, I will go ahead and say his name. His last name is Ryan, either Brennan or Brenner. I really forget which one it was. But I know it's one or the other. I even remember writing it down. Funny thing, I even remember where I wrote it down at. The sad thing is I've long lost it. It was a, an old Bible I had. It was sort of a a, a small size one, but it was both Testaments. And like the Gideons, it had both old and new. And I remember writing his name in that Bible to remember it. But I've long lost it and don't even know where it is. But I started to think about him a few weeks ago. And last week I started to think about him even more. Perhaps because it's now winter. For I remember whenever it was... I talked to him. It was either the very latter part of 1979, around December <clears throat> that year, or it was either that an early part of 1980, either January or February. <clears> that <throat> really don't matter. I do remember the conversation, not everything, but I remember the basic gist. Uh I was up at Davis and Elkins College. I believe I was there uh, doing some study and stuff, and I decided to go over to the snack bar there. 
And I don't know why it happened, but I found myself talking to him about the things of the Lord. And I don't even remember why we got on the subject, and I'm not going <clears> to <throat> get heavy on this tonight, or today actually. I'm, doing, I'm just going to bring it up, hopefully, to do another message sometime in the future, covering his objection just a little bit better, his thoughts he had. I remember talking to him, and I don't remember why, I brought up 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the, the righteousness of God in him. I don't even know why we were talking about it. I know basically the gist, and I don't want to get on it right now. We also brought up the verse, Matthew chapter 27, 46. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sakathani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We talked a while that night. I, he brought up some things that I, you know, never really th thought much of before, just things I knew. From this, at that time, I'd been saved probably just about a year. A lot of things I still was new at, and sometimes I didn't even understand every verse I heard always properly. I, I think I did have it together on them, but like I said, that's been over 40 years. But anyway, as we talk, we decided we better talk more later. I decided I was going to call my pastor. It was in Reverend Robert L. Lowther. I do remember calling him, and I hate to say it. I think when I called him, he was out of town preaching somewhere, if I recall correctly. Or maybe it was during one of his trips to Haiti. I do not remember. I don't remember talking to him any that night. And if I had, I forgot it. <laughs> but anyway... We used to meet sometime the next day again at the snack bar. He gave me a certain time. I'm not going to try even remembering what time it was after over 40, uh, wow, after f nearly 44 years. Wow. <laughs> no use to try remembering it. Just been a little bit too long ago for that. But I just, he, when I sat there waiting for him, Guess what he never did? He never shown up. He never shown up. I remember seeing him a few times after that. I generally spoke to him and tried to be nice. But as far as I know, that was the last time I ever witnessed him. I don't know if I ever gave him any tracks. I don't really remember I could have gave him a track, and that could have been what started it. I do not remember all that happened that night. I hope I did. In fact, probably if I gave him a track then, it was probably one of all B. Green tracks, which we used to hand out a lot years ago. But anyway, as I was thinking about him Friday, I was starting to get a burden for him after all these years. I even prayed for him, but I always when they pray for somebody like that, I always say, now, Lord, you know whether he's alive or not. If he's alive tonight or today, I ask you to speak to his heart and his life. I don't know where he is, but you know full well where he is, for you're the all-knowing God. You know everything to be known. You know the past. You know the present. You know the future. You know where that where that sinner is. No sinner can run and hide from it, you, nor can we hide from him. So God knows where he is now. As I thought on it, I couldn't help but remember this story the late Theodore R. Kyle told years ago about an experience he had in World War II. It's a story I've told quite a few times. The title of the story is I Wonder Where They Are. 
<clears throat> how on a night while he was in the Atlantic Ocean back in World War II, I believe it was a, towards the evening, if not even actually after the sun came down. It was a cold night, and the sky had such an unusual darkness about it. He said that was one of the most fearful things he had ever seen up until then. In fact, he talked like that was the first time in his whole life he was actually afraid because of that eerie sky that was happening. As their ship sailed on, they were heading towards that weird sky. <coughs> and this is what happened. When they got up to it, they could see a ship that was on fire <coughs> in the distance. And as they got even closer, they could see five men on a raft. The, fire, the ship was on fire. The oil on the water around the ship was on fire. <coughs> they could see five men on a raft. They started heading closer and closer. When all of a sudden, it came on the intercom to turn back. So they turned back and went a different direction. And as they were going that different direction, he looked back. He could still see the men on the raft waving, trying to get their attention. But they were going away. You know, sometimes I wonder how many times we've gone past by men who we could have reached. Later on, he asked the boat swayman, why did you all do it? He says, because it could have very well been a, some spies pretending to be men in trouble. And if we were gone, we would probably have been hit by a, by a torpedo and sunk. As I think about that, I wonder where they are. I'm sure Ted Kyle thought a lot about those five men on the raft. I can't help but think about people like Ryan Brennan, who I witnessed to back when I was in sin. You know, while I'm here, there's only... Here's some of the things where Brian could be now. He could have already gotten saved. He could be saved serving God, and I just don't know a thing about it. There's times I've met people and witnessed to them. And yes, there's been a time or two when I ran into one or two years later, and they were indeed serving the Lord. But I'll tell you something. We don't know. But God does. Straight is a gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. He may have very well gotten saved and it's never got back to me. It's very possible he's still lost. Sad thing, the majority of the world is lost now. And it could very well be he's still lost in deep sin. And who knows, God may have had me to preach this message with hopes that Ryan Brennan would hear it and give him one last opportunity to be born again. If that's the case, I just pray, God, let him hear it. Let him hear it. Let him hear it. There's a lot of things I forgot about him. I forget whether he was from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or Maryland, which a lot of the kids I knew from Davis and Elkins College were from. I don't know. You know what I believe? I believe he's still alive. What, what I said could very well be what will cause him to get saved. For as Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit and joints and morrows and is a thought and a, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When it says quick, that means alive. That's the living word that I'm preaching from. It has a way to affect people. How many people have left a revival meeting lost 
<clears throat> but something that preacher said haunted them. Haunted them. I remember in a village, hear a story about a village. This preacher came to the town. He started to, you know, people there were trying to torment him, try to test him and stuff. And one man in that in that village tried to, you know, baffle him. He went up to the preacher and started to argue with him. You know all the preacher said? He said, Hebrews 9, 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, after this to judgment. The man said some more. The preacher replied once again, After this, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, after this to judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. He repeated, I think, two more times when that man tried to talk to him. Hebrews 9, 27. And as the point of the men after, wants to die after this, the judgment. Shock of shocks. That very Sunday morning, guess who was in his church service? They're listening and taking heed to what he said. That man, he just, he just tried to challenge or test him. The preacher asked him after church, why are you here this morning? He said, listen, I got saved earlier this week. That night you talked to, gave me that verse about Hebrews 9, 27. As of the point on a man wants to die after this to judgment. He said, when I left, I start to cross a bridge. The bullfrogs were chirping. You know, he says they were there chirping. They said, he said to the preacher, and it seemed like every time they'd croak, chirp, whichever you want to call it, it sounded like they were saying, judgment, 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 judgment. As a result, that man got saved all through the Word of God, and all through that verse. And I believe the Bible is quick and powerful. Amen. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You know what? I believe when you hear the gospel preached, it will haunt you. He may forget it, sinner man, <clears throat> what was said within a few hours even. Have you ever had this happen years later? That very sermon you quenched comes back and haunts you. <clears throat> it's because the Holy Ghost, the sword, which the Bible is called the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Ephesians 6, 17, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to deal with you years later. Ryan may be dead. If he is, he's one of two places. Sad he may very well be in hell right now. The Bible talks about a rich man in Luke chapter 16, 19 through 21 who when he died, he woke up in hell, being in torments. He, he could still taste, he could still feel, he could still smell. I believe he could still hear, he could still see, he had all his senses. And when he died, he went to hell. He went to hell. And I'm sorry to say, I believe the vast majority of the world is heading there. I've had people criticize me for preaching that. But I'll tell you what, straight is the gate and narrows the way, and few there be that find it. Broad is the way to destruction, and many be thereon. That's the words of Jesus Christ, not the words of Chip Roy. That's why I believe it. He could very well be in hell now. I do not know. I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. 
And today, Ryan, if by some miracle you're hearing me right now, I want you to know if you're not saved yet, you can be saved. You can be born again. You can trust Jesus and don't have to go to hell. Hell's a real place full of real souls, full of real flames, full of real torments. Not only just physical, but I believe mental torments. Remember what Abraham said to him, son, remember? I believe that, that he remembered not just the, the way he lived in this world as far as fair and sumptuously every day, but I believe he remembered the sins he had committed. I believe he remembered every opportunity. And any sinner out there right now listening, you will remember those opportunities. I believe they will haunt you the rest of eternity. As, a, as it goes, <clears throat> eternity is too long to be wrong. <clears throat> Sinner, whether you're Ryan or somebody else, why not turn to Jesus today? The other thing, if he's dead, he may be in heaven. Remember what Paul said, for me to live as Christ, and to die is gain. When you die, you gain. Remember with Stephen, when they were stoning him, he looked up to heaven and saw Jesus at the right hand of God the Father. You realize that, Jesus, that, that he, he was getting ready to become the first martyr. Jesus stood up. I believe he was there standing welcoming him home. They held their they they held their ears. They did not want to hear what he was saying. I believe they knew it was true what he was saying, but they were still fighting it. And finally, he says, "In Lord, into Thy hands I commit my spirit, and lay not this charge upon any one of them." Thank God. Because there that day there was a young man named Saul. Saul, it says he was holding their coats. It said he was approving of the death. I thought when I first read that, I thought, well, uh, he was holding the coats. What does that have to do with him persecuting them? Let me tell you what I found out. Saul was a member of the Sanhedrin. He just wasn't there shaking his head and nodding. He was one of the very men that had him sentenced to die that day. I believe he was one of the men. He was just there nodding, watching the coats while he watched those men die and watched Stephen die. And as a result, he became a bitter persecutor of the church. You know what? I don't believe it ever escaped him, what Stephen said. I believe there were many saints he had killed who tried their best to witness to him. I believe there are many who say, Father, forgive uh, Saul, for he knows not what he's doing. Many probably died praying, Lord, save this man's soul. And finally, one day on the road to Damascus, when he was knocked down by the Lord, and he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And as a result, Saul got saved. And he went by his Roman name after that, Paul. You know what? He became a great witness for the Lord. This book I have right here, the Bible. He remote the majority of the New Testament. <clears throat> Today... I don't know where Ryan is. I don't know whether he's alive or dead. I don't know if he's in heaven or in hell. I don't know if he's saved or lost, and I hope he's not the next one. I believe there comes a day when God will, will say enough's enough and turn you over to a reprobate mind. He'll, he'll quit dealing with you. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 7, I mean 3, 
verse 7 and 8. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. I believe when God gives a man up, it's not because God is a mean God. I believe it's because a person has hardened their hearts so long. God will never force you to serve him. He can't force you to serve him. He may make you wish you had, but he can't force you. He will never force you. And I believe what happens, the heart of the man becomes so hard that God can't even get in to, get to him. He's turned him away that much. And God has no other choice but to depart. I hope it's not so for Ian. I pray God save Ryan. If he's still alive, please deal with him now. Don't let him die lost and go to hell. Father, let this, if he's still alive and is able to do so, Father, let this message get to Ryan. Let somebody somehow just turn this message on and he hears it. May he remember me? Maybe not. That part doesn't matter. The part is I want him to follow Jesus. Ryan, if you're out there, I want you now to repent of your sin. You're a sinner in the need of a Savior. Unless you've already been born again, that is. But today, Ryan, if you're not saved, I challenge you to repent of your sin. The Bible says, Luke chapter 13 Verse 1 through 5, verse 3 and 5 in particular says, Nay, I tell you, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Acts chapter 17, verse 30 says, Amen. And God hath called all men everywhere to repent. That's each and every one of us. The Bible says, Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. I tell you what, sin entered into the world through Adam's sin in, gar in the garden. Amen. And as a result, all men are sinned. I tell you something today. It doesn't matter whether you're Ryan Brennan or somebody else. Whether your first name is Ryan, whether your first name is Marion, whether your first name is Jill, whether your first name is Dan. I don't care what your name is. Uh, hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus today as your Savior and Lord, why not reach out to him? I don't know. I have more notes, but I'm not going to worry about them. I just want to challenge the lost uh, who are listening to me right now. And now's the time. Today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow could very well be too late. Tonight could be too late. Why not receive Jesus today in your heart and life? Uh, I'll tell you what. I believe that Jesus is dealing with somebody today. Ryan, if you're listening, please turn to Jesus today. Please turn to Jesus today. I don't know why he gave me a burden for you this past Friday. But I don't want you to die lost I wish I could have addressed you better that time. I tried to witness to you back in the latter part of 1979 or early part of 1980. It really don't. But today I am now reaching out. What must you do? You must first off recognize your need that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Next, you need to repent of your sin. That's godly sorrow for it. Thirdly, you must recognize that Jesus is the only way. The Bible says, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. As he stand at your door, he's the only way. <clears throat> Buddha's not the way. Muhammad's not the way. Confucius is not the way. Reverend Moon is not the way. 
<clears throat> There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting night. Ryan, you could just personalize it and say, For God so loved Ryan Brennan that He gave His only begotten Son, that if Ryan believe, Brennan believes in Him, Ryan Brennan should not perish, but Ryan Brennan will have everlasting life. Why not receive Jesus today? Recognize Jesus is the only way. And recognize that he both died and rose from the dead. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, Amen. For God committed his love towards us. And while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know what? One thing Jesus said was John 15 verse 13 Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He didn't just lay down his life for us when we were his friends. No, no, he laid down his life for his enemies so we could be, become his friend. Amen. Today, you must recognize he died, but he rose again. The Bible says, Romans 10, 9, 10, but as many... Amen. For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ryan, if God has allowed you to listen to this, please, first off, I'm giving out my phone number. It's there. If you look at 540 540-660-9277. 540-660-9277. EvangelistWMR2 at yahoo.com is my email address. You can write or text me at 540-660-9277. You can write me, Reverend Warren Chip Roy, P.O. Box 884, Stephen City, Virginia, 22655. If, Ryan, you get saved today, let me know. Let me know. I don't understand why the Lord woke me up Friday with you on my mind, with a, or with a burden that uh, pray for you, that you will be saved, that he'll give you one more chance. Other sinners, the same offers for you. If you're a sinner or a backslider, don't put off salvation any longer. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may very well be too late. It may very well be too late. Don't put it off. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door. I will come in and sup with him. He with me. Revelation 3.20 The Bible says, John chapter 1 verse 12, that as many as received him, to them gave he power that they come the sons of God, as many as believe on his name. Why not receive Jesus while you can? God bless you.